Hay fever. It can be crippling for those who suffer from it. And this time of year, there's millions upon millions of grains of pollen circulating through the air and finding their way into our nostrils. Now it's understandable why some might feel some animosity towards fall flowering plants for that reason, but there's one group of plants that catches a lot of the blame, it's the goldenrods, and that's what we're talking about today. Goldenrods are a complex group of plants. With something like 100 to 120 different species, there seems to be a goldenrod for every sort of habitat type. You have your generalists and you have your specialists. We're only going to meet a small subset of them today, but what I want you to keep in mind is that goldenrods are vital to the ecology of these temperate regions. So come on, let's go see who we can find. Now this is the goldenrod you're probably most likely to encounter. This is Canada goldenrod, Solidago canadensis. And you can tell that because it's got a lot of small flowers that are neatly arranged on one side of each of the flowering spikes. The leaves are kind of roughed, they're predominantly three-veined, and the stem, also kind of downy. Very hardy plant and actually can be quite weedy in some areas, but it is an excellent nectar source, especially late in the season. Mm. Now because they bloom around the same time as the ragweeds, and the fact that they're so gosh darn conspicuous, goldenrods generally get blamed for hay fever. It's simply not true though. These flowers are insect pollinated, which means their pollen has to be very heavy and very sticky in order for insects to properly transfer them from one flower to the next. But that also means that they do not become airborne readily. Simple fact, not enough pollen grades from goldenrod get into the air to affect you whatsoever. So this plant should not be the object of your anger. It should be celebrated for the ecological wonder that it truly is. Here's another common old field goldenrod, the grass-leaved goldenrod, Euthamia graminifolia. You can tell it apart from the rest by these long grass-like leaves and the clustered flowers that kind of flat-topped, almost like they're in an umbel. Another easy distinguishing characteristic is that this species often gets a tar spot on its leaves. It's one to keep your eye out for and definitely one worth getting to know. Now this just might be one of my favorite goldenrods of all time. This is the showy goldenrod, Solidago speciosa. And you can tell that because it's got large, fleshy, smooth leaves, a smooth reddish stem, and a dense cluster of rather large flowers that are rather stiff and pointing upwards. It is a wonderful old field species and it attracts just as much attention as the rest, but it's also very easy on the eyes. I adore this plant a whole heck of a lot, and it's really exciting to see that there's a lot of it growing around this part of the field. Awesome find. not all about fields with the goldenrods. Some of them enjoy forested habitats, kind of like this one, a special little species called the elm-leaved goldenrod, Solidago ulmifolia. Gets that name because these leaves superficially resemble that of an elm tree. It's a wonderful little plant, again, enjoys shadier habitats, and as you can see, offers ample opportunity for pollinators in a woodland setting. What's not to love? Yet another great woodland goldenrod, the blue-stemmed goldenrod. It's easy to identify because its flowers, which we're a little early for, 
are borne in clusters in the axils of the leaves. The stem takes on this zigzagged appearance. The leaves are soft and narrow. And if you look very closely along the stem, it produces a waxy bloom that gives it a bluish hue. Hence, blue stem goldenrod. Now here's a goldenrod that might be a little bit harder to find for some. This is Gray's goldenrod, Solidago nemoralis. And you can identify it because it's got small secondary leaflets at the base of its larger leaves, this arching stem, and a wonderful gray down on the stem, which gives it its common name. This is a hardy little bugger, and one worth seeking out. Now here's the last goldenrod of the day. This is Riddell's goldenrod, Oligonron riddellii. And it's a great species because it's a little bit harder to find and really worth getting to know if you do come across it. It's smooth stemmed, has these long narrow leaves without any teeth, and they're kind of heavily folded at the margins. And the flowers are large and again clustered on the top in this flat, umble like appearance. It likes drier soils, so this hill prairie is a perfect kind of habitat for it. And I'm really happy I got to show you this today. Now remember, whether it's Riddle's goldenrod here or Canada goldenrod growing in the field by your house, they're ecologically important species. Many different pollinators enjoy their flowers. Different kinds of soldier beetles, as we see here, eat their pollen. And numerous insects both build galls inside the stems and they have their parasites. These are ecologically important plants and some of the last flowers available in the fall before things get really cold. So I urge you to give solidagos and other goldenrods a second look and maybe a chance on your landscape.